Today, I wanted to share with you all a short video exploring a world imagined by someone in my YouTube comment section. After reading the comments, I simply had to relate to you the seemingly unironic vision that this commenter had on my video, what if everything went perfect for the USA? Showing how the US could have truly achieved Pax Americana. As a disclaimer, I have taken a couple of liberties since the commenter wasn't fully coherent in their timeline and while I doubt it, there is always an opportunity that this commenter was ironic when leaving this comment. But with that, sit back and enjoy the ride. We start our timeline during the American War of Independence, or at least during the reign of King George III of Britain. After America had won the war in North America, the Americans could have simply crossed the Atlantic to overthrow the British monarchy, absorbing Ireland into the Union. But from here, the British Empire was now so weak that the Americans might as well take over the entire formerly British Empire. And with that, BAM, the United States is now a pan-Atlantic nation owning many former British colonies around the world. I don't think that I need to explain how this is just a ludicrous idea. Sure, George III wasn't the most competent ruler, and Washington and other American figures performed admirably during the War of Independence, but the War of Independence was won on American soil, where the British were the ones that needed to cross the Atlantic. America didn't have the naval power to cross the Atlantic with any significant force, and while their landing would send shockwaves across Europe, there is no doubt that it would end in a devastating American defeat. But, according to the commenter, the US is already practically unstoppable now. Russia was very weak at this point, and the power of the Mongol Empire had long since faded. I don't see why mentioning the Mongol Empire is even remotely relevant, it has been 5 centuries since their rise, but anyway, thanks to Russian weakness, the Americans could simply conquer the nation. Yes, this commenter is seriously suggesting that Washington, following his victory in North America and the conquest of Britain, simply lands his forces in St. Petersburg or Siberia and causes the Russian Empire, one of the largest military forces of the time, to collapse. Here, it is important to note that the American army at this time was a militia-based force, loyal to their home state rather than the mostly non-existent ideal of a unified America, let alone the idea of spreading freedom and liberty across the world. It is this army that is supposedly leading these invasions. But anyways, next on the list is France. This is the period right before the French Revolution, so the monarchy was already on the verge of collapse. Thus, the Americans would have no problems marching in and using the chaos to annex the entire French Empire, which, according to this commenter, includes Belgium as well. Now ignoring that Belgium wasn't actually a part of France at this time, this conquest is the first that is at least somewhat explained. As it's not just the Americans willing their way into conquest, there's actually the French Revolution and civil unrest to help, but still, this is obviously a ludicrous idea. Despite the turmoil of revolution, the French performed admirably against the reactionary empires working to break them even in their own timeline, and it would be crazy to think that the United States could somehow perform better. But now in control of France, the Americans would continue into Italy, with America taking charge of the region and its colonies as well. Now it could just be me, but I don't remember any Italian colonies in the early 19th century. But at this point, what's there to say? Of all the military campaigns that the US has went on so far, the conquest of Italy is probably the most realistic, as Italy is a series of small and divided states rather than a global superpower. The US then pulls their attention south. They may have conquered much of Europe, but their American empire is still lacking. Luckily, the Spanish and Portuguese empires are both very weak, leading to the easy conquest of Iberia, and thus their colonial empires as well. Now, while this was happening, the commenter has left no hint as to what year we're in, but there's nothing suggesting that decades have passed between the conquest of France, which was definitely before the revolution, and this conquest of Iberia. Thus, we can conclude that we're very likely still in the early 19th century, and America has already conquered half of the world. But next up is my favorite piece of American expansion, as they turn their attention to the German states. These German states, under threat from the Ottoman Empire, would voluntarily integrate into the American Empire because, and I quote, they would much rather welcome a Christian, Messianic, Jewish nation rather than a Muslim one. Now the very idea that in the 1800s the Ottomans are still a significant threat to the Germans is insane, but it's even funnier to think that this threat is significant enough for the Germans to voluntarily join the Union. But with this, the age of conquest for the US is seemingly over, and the commenter dives into the political and religious sides of this alternate world. They start off stating that evil religious and political viewpoints would no longer exist, which basically means 
any ideology and religion, apart from Christianity and Judaism, would be stamped out by the US. Here, the commenter blatantly shows their gigantic bias as they brand everything apart from the Judeo-Christian tradition as evil, perfectly encapsulating how we should always be on the lookout for bias, even in simple alternate history scenarios on YouTube, as not everyone is this open about their true motives and biases. But back to the world map, there is now nobody left to oppose the Americans, as all nations that could have potentially stood up to the Americans have now been wiped out. AKA, all European nations have been wiped out. And if the Americans can defeat Britain and Russia, these non-Europeans aren't going to stand a chance, am I right? Luckily, this world dominated by early 1800s America would see the US use their power for good. The nation that in our timeline fought a civil war over slavery and took more than a century to realize that racism may be bad, actually, would in this alternate world, where they stand unopposed on the world stage, come to the conclusion themselves that these things are in fact bad, ending all racist and sexist ideologies of any kind, including slavery. This may just be my favorite line in this entire comment. The US in our timeline didn't end slavery, racism or sexism, not even fully in the modern day, but as an alternate America on top of the world, with no outside pressure to reform, they would manage this early on. What an extremely unexpected and progressive move from this alternate United States. Amazing. To conclude, the commenter explains why this American empire didn't manifest in our timeline. It was a lack of unity in its citizens, adherence to Christian messianic Jewish values, vision, foresight and courage. Then another amazing line, a lack of courage to suddenly develop technologies that would outstrip even what we have now in our society. Because apparently, if the US was courageous enough, they could have just willed into existence advanced technology. Then finally, the US also failed to completely reject evil ideologies, they had a lack of planning, and, again, a lack of courage to just take this first step by taking the war to the home islands of the British Empire. It was at this point that I closed my eyes to imagine this alternate world and finally realized its genius. If only the founding fathers would have had the courage to will into existence technology, outstripping even what we have now, everything in this alternate history makes perfect sense. The Americans didn't cross the Atlantic with boats, George Washington took his newly invented space shuttle to raid Buckingham Palace. The administration of such a vast empire is also no problem, obviously, as Washington could have just installed governors which he communicated with through hollow calls. It pains me to say that if only the founding fathers had better adhered to Judeo-Christian values, this is the world we could have lived in today. But that's it for this video. It was just meant as a short one for fun, showing the insanity that I sometimes have to deal with in my comment section. Thank you all for watching, consider leaving a like and a comment to support the content, subscribe for two more videos every single week, and to continue watching, click on one of the two videos on screen now. Again, thank you all for watching, and goodbye.